A lot of people these days seem to be struggling with actually keeping a good, healthy relationship together with the person that they've been dating for three, six, 12 months now. It's a really bad pandemic that's been hitting America and the rest of the world pretty hard because there's been a lot of new age waves of like modernity and feminism and all kinds of ridiculous movements that have been happening that have been absolutely destroying the traditional values that we as humans have always had throughout our entire history of being humans. Is this something that happens to you? Do you have relationships that you go through where the relationship doesn't last more than six months? Or do you go through more than four girls throughout a 12 month calendar year? How can you tell if after the breakup, how can you tell if it was them, if it was you, or if it was both of you and it just wasn't meant to work out? How can you tell? How can you fix this so that you actually keep your relationships stable in the future? There's got to be a way, right? Well, there is. And I'm going to go over three different steps that you could take so that way you can prevent this from happening in the future. And with any luck, you can actually get together with your next girlfriend and it's going to last and it's going to be happy. But this isn't a free ride. I'm not going to tell you do this and this and this and you're guaranteed. Nothing in life is guaranteed, my friend, nothing. This requires your own hard work. And if that already sounds intimidating to you, good luck, I guess. But let's go ahead and actually ask the very first question. Was it their fault? Think back on any arguments that you and your girlfriend had. What were they started by? Were they started by a strong emotion? Were they started by stress? Were they started by money? Were they started by other people? What were they started by? If it was by stress, what kind of stress was it? Was it stress from her job? Was it stress from other people? Stress about life? Stress about money? What was the stress about? Was, this, was it because you just weren't spending enough time with her? Was she wanting more of your time than you could reasonably provide? Was she expecting you to text and call her more often than you could reasonably text and call her? Was she wanting more positive reinforcement than you were willing or able to provide? Now, these are all very possible reasons on why it could be her fault. It, it could be her fault because she was demanding a lot of things from you that you just couldn't provide or she was just stressed about a lot of things that you didn't have any control over. Sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it genuinely is their fault. How can we find out if it was actually our fault? What if it was my fault that she left me? How do you know? Well, there's one surefire way that you can find out, okay? This one's scary and not everyone's gonna do this, but you need to get in contact with your ex. That's right. You need to slide into your ex's DMs and get into a conversation with her about what did I do wrong? I'm trying to figure out why this ended. Can you please help me out? If they don't get back with you, they don't get back with you. That's whatever. You can move on from there. But in the off chance that your ex actually gets him back in contact with you and explains it was because of such and such and such and such and such, you know? And maybe some of them are valid reasons. Maybe some of them are like, you didn't spend enough time with me, or I saw that you were out with your friends more than you were out with me. Sometimes they can be valid reasons. Sometimes it can be pretty invalid reasons. Like, you didn't call me when you got home. You didn't reply to my text messages fast enough. You know, sometimes it can be valid. Sometimes it can be invalid. It's up to you to decide what's valid or invalid. But most often, most people can kind of discern what's reasonable and what's unreasonable, right? So let's move on to either if you did already talk to your exes or if your exes didn't reply to you, then how do you still figure out if it was your fault? Well, again, you can think back to the relationship and just like before, you can think back when you had arguments, what were they over? And again, if they were over stresses, if they were over money, if they were over not spending enough time with her, you can then take the extra step and think, was the stress from life because of me? If it wasn't, move on. Was she arguing with me about issues that were because of what I did? 
you know, it, it takes a little bit of self-reflection and meditation and honestly really looking deep into your soul and realizing, did I go wrong here or here? It's very easy and unbelievably easy to turn a blind eye to your own faults. But if you can do this kind of self-discovery, it's going to pay massive dividends for when you get into your next relationship. So now let's go talk about what if it was both of your faults? What if the relationship just wasn't meant to be? Choose better next time. That's it. Just choose better next time and you'll probably have a better relationship. If it was both of your faults, maybe there's some things you could change about yourself and then you could choose better next time for a future mate. All right, so now next on our list of steps that we need to take to get a better relationship outcome. We need to step back from the dating scene. Chances are, if you've been having trouble keeping your relationships, it's more than likely a you issue. Even if it has been for the last three or four relationships, even if it has genuinely been their fault, it's still a you issue because you chose poorly. So you need to step back and actually think about why are you choosing these females that are always bringing you issues? If that, it's very rare that that's the case, but if that is the case, you still need to step back and actually learn to recognize red flags and choose better. That's it, that's, that's really it. So then if you are taking this time to step back from the dating scene, then you need to also take this time to hang out with your friends more often. Not online friends, not Discord friends, friends in real life. Friends from high school, friends from college, friends from work, coworkers. Hang out with somebody. I guarantee you anything that if you ask around your workplace, if you don't have any friends, does anybody go to any bars after work? on Fridays. I guarantee you there is not a single space in this country where there is not a group of coworkers that all go out to a bar together every Friday night. I guarantee you. If for nothing else you don't have any friends and you don't have anybody to hang out with, go out with a group of coworkers. Get your social skills upgraded. Just go out and mingle. Do something. Go out more. Go explore more. Get more hobbies. Take the time to develop your character. Take the time to discover who you are, why you are, and what you can do to provide any kind of value to yourself as well as your future wife. Because you're gonna be dating to marry. If you're not dating to marry, that's stupid. You date for marriage, in my opinion. You shouldn't be dating with any other intention other than to marry someone. So you need to go and make yourself as pickable as possible. You need to go out to the gym and work out more. You need to develop your social skills and social mannerisms more. You need to go out there and actually get more experience practicing with other females, with your friends around to help you. You need to do something for six to 12 months. For six to 12 months, you need to get out there and develop yourself. So that way, when you do get back into the dating scene and you do start dating seriously for marriage, you are a worthy pick. You're not some dude that's hanging out online for 18 hours out of the day with no drive and no motive to provide a family. If after six to 12 months, you've spent time working out at the gym, you've spent time meditating, you've spent time journaling, you've spent time Finding who you truly are, Simba. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get copyright striked for that. But if you spend time really finding yourself and remembering who you truly are, <laughs> then after 6 to 12 months, if you get back into the dating scene, you'll be much better off than you were before you took a break from dating. And on top of that, while actually, you know what? I forgot to mention this. While you're out there, while you're developing yourself, you also need to read up on basic human psychology. You don't need an education major for this. You don't need to go to college for this. There's plenty of online sources and even books that go into detail about basic human psychology, social mannerisms, all kinds of things. And you need to recognize what's a red flag for you and what's a green flag for you. No one is ever gonna have zero red flags. 
if they do wife that because that is exceedingly rare but we want to get those red flags down to one if through three months of dating someone you find only one red flag that they exhibit offhand they're a good person if they have all kinds of green flags and they only have one to zero red flags, that is a wifey material. You go wife that. Just be sure to be confident when you get back out there and be ready to handle rejection when it comes. Because it's not easy to find someone out in the physical space. It's easy to sit on your phone and swipe through Tinder and Bumble and Facebook dating. It's easy to do that. But that doesn't give you a good quality woman that's out here. Actual good people that are willing and able to date in person and looking for something serious don't go on dating sites. They are just living their best life, trying to get by, and genuinely just trying to date people and find someone out in the dating market. That's where you need to be. You don't need to be online. You need to be out in the field actually getting numbers and handing out numbers. Which is actually a really quick tip now that I think about it. Don't ask a girl for her phone number. You give your phone number to her. This does two things. One, it asserts your authority. It shows that you are offering her something. It shows that you're authoritative. It shows that you're aggressive. It shows that you're wanting her. But you don't take her number. And the second reason for that is because she needs to be the one that wants to contact you, not the other way around. And besides this, it's just easier to do it this way because the more numbers that you hand out, the more you spread your number, the more likely that you're actually gonna get texts back. And on top of that, the ones that do actually end up texting you, they're actually already interested in you. You don't have to send out text messages and just hope and pray that the, they will text back. You don't, well, maybe they will text back after 72 hours, surely. You don't have to do that. Just hand out numbers and wait for the text to come flying into you. Just a quick little tip for me. But hopefully by the end of all of this, after you've taken a step back, you've realized whether or not it's been you or them or both, and you've improved yourself and made yourself a very desirable young man, hopefully when you come back and you actually start dating for marriage, you'll find a wife and you'll be able to propose to her and marry her and have a beautiful little family with her. But you can only do that if you take time to take care of your mind, body, and soul. And it also helps if you subscribe to my channel <laughs> and like the video and leave a comment below on any thoughts about this video. But I will see you later. Stay smooth.